G'day punters and welcome to a midweek edition of the Mailbag Preview Show this week. We've got the normal crew back on deck. We'll be taking a look at the Thousand Guineas, going a bit of a runner by runner for a midweek Group 1 at Caulfield. Uh, as always, sponsored by punningform.com.au. If you don't use it, get on board and baggybet.com. If you haven't signed up, sign up today, download the app and get involved in all the action and we'll gamble responsibly download the app gamble responsibly and um yeah do your best and we'll do ours as always shane how was the weekend and your monday uh no, it was a frustrating saturday uh on the punt james um in queensland particularly i think i had like 26 units of worth of runners up bets including uh, a bet to win 15 units on the last race at Eagle Farm on the Ruffy Rejoiced, who just missed, like literally just missed. That set me off. Um, I think I ate a packet of Maltesers, a bag oh. of licorice, and a bag of those sour worms, a natural confectionery company sour worms. Have you so got you diabetes? Sleep Saturday night then? Yeah. I was trying to get diabetes just so I would have to stop punting or something. I, I couldn't. I was trying not to I'm trying not to drink uh, at the moment. I'm just trying to keep myself fresh for the spring carnival. So I attacked that carnival um, off a of freshen up. But uh, yeah, frustrating day. Um, but it was an entertaining evening on Twitter. So um, that made up for it. I'm going to say the, the aftermath would have made up for 26 units of seconds, no oh. doubt. Yeah. And I saw you were still at it. You were still at it, giving out advice late on a Sunday evening also. Yeah, look, did my best to... Um, to put aside my normal arrogant dismissive self <laughs> and um, and try and articulate how a commercial entity operates um, to a few people that had some questions on Twitter. So I was more than obliging on clarifying that. It um, really triggered you blokes there implying that, like, you work for me, didn't it? It really triggered him. Yeah, Jackson, uh, Peter, I don't know if you guys listen to the deep dive, but the worst abuse, like, like I thought the Twitter abuse was bad this week. But the worst abuse was safe for the boys. So just echo chamber, just hanging shit on me for the the longest deep dive in recent memory. Yeah, and I'm just going to pull you up there. I'm thinking that we work for you. Don't think that, Jack. <laughs> no, that's what triggered you when they implied that you did. Oh, it, it just true big trigger, big trigger yeah. work from the from the yeah. Twitter sphere, from the trolls. Yeah. They got to you. Very, very much uh, independent operators over at the mailbag. Um, we are the last of the Mohicans. We're the last independent betting, accountable betting advice people left on the sphere, let alone at the mailbag, because Jack couldn't cop it and went the other way. But here we are. Oh, no, we didn't see, have... see, look, it's happy. you can throw them over the fence when I'm when you're on the deep dive and I'm not there to sort of <laughs> rebut. But if you're going to keep going on, the, the tone that you all sucked about the vet not scratching I wish I win was... <laughs> it was sickening. It was, well, it was a disgrace. Like no, I could, I, I he's felt still like was doing a, it. I felt like one of those blokes that backed Trump to win the presidency. <laughs> like I wanted an inquiry. I wanted me money back, justice <laughs> refunds. We were robbed. Uh, <laughs> Gab, Gab, how was your weekend? I had a bit of a frustrating one on the punt myself. I certainly had a lot of place getters and I did not back them to place. So uh, Berkeley Square was one of them. Just uh, got going. I think you were pretty stiff with Berkeley Square. I think it was a really good run. Good horse. Probably follow it to the derby, yeah? Yeah, I'm still happy to stay on. uh, Just uh, probably a bit late. But, you know, the good news is not only do I get to spend a Friday with you guys, I've, I've now got a Monday and I'm absolutely chuffed about that. What are you doing with alligator bod? Ah, uh, you know, I think, I think he, I think he's, he'll be fine. Like first time over the 2000 meters, I probably knew that was, that was going to happen, but just, yeah. I think he's got a better, better lot platform now to go good in a Cox plate. And what well, the market's really reacted to the Martin power. Like he's a huge price. Yeah, well, that's fine. But, yeah, I, I think he's probably going to improve there as well. It's kind of similar to, to like, you know, the previous race and everything, the way it's sort of gone. I think now he's gone this distance, he's he's going to be able to progress. But I'm Thunderstruck was great. Animo, he's just, he's just so good. 
<laughs> I mean, he was my futures bet, so I'm glad I'm still on him. Um, but yeah, he's he's an absolute gun. James, your whole lot from the weekend just gone. No, uh, give me balls on the punt, so it wasn't anything <laughs> hunting related. Well, God bless Pistol for for getting us out with an epic set at Ascot live yeah. from Ascot. So, God bless him. I can actually eat this week. Um, oh, look, the highlight has to be the the, the Twitter shenanigans for me. And <laughs> how are you feeling about it all? I couldn't care less, to be honest. Um, the I was embarrassed about my behaviour, like at the end with the. DX Triple H move, but that was aimed at Shane, who hung shit on me. And then I felt good. At, I'm glad I did it after the shit that was hung on me again this morning. But it was aimed at Shane, and the shit he hung on me on well, Thursday night show. And um, I was right; he was wrong. That's it. And and as they said on the T dive, like it was fascinating listening to them. Sook, like the horse was vetted. If you didn't want to be on it, you took two seventy and two ninety boys. It's pretty easy, isn't it? What yeah. to do? There's an yeah. exchange. Like grow up, Peter Pan. Come on. At the end of the day, you took a horse on that half the country, half Twitter um, were keen on, and you got it right. Yeah, that's Thank um, you. your, your previous seven races hadn't, so you were due one. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I was going to say, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the first one he's got right since he started being a bookmaker. So um, there'll be a few, um, there'll be a few trucks trust uh, aimed at him uh, when it's by too. Don't worry, I, I, I fully expect all the Twitter. All of Twitter to get behind me on this, and when you back a winner with him, just get on there and do a little video and give him that, and give it straight back. I will be, I will be a hundred percent. Looking forward to that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. I'm looking forward to it. I want to see a costume. Right, should we talk about Wednesday? Yeah, enough of the, enough of looking back. Let's look forward. We got a Group One at Caulfield, as I said. I believe we're going to do a. a a runner by runner, and Gabby's going to run through that for us today. So we'll have a look at a market now. Up what it goes. We have got... Um... We Dancer would be the favourite at the moment, I think, and North Star last sitting about 5.50. Taj Need, is that, is that how you say it? I'm not too sure. There Don't the ask me, Gab. Ask Jack. <laughs> Tajneed it is. <laughs> Tajneed, 13 bucks. She's literally lickety split in the market. She might be running a nice, another nice race and then the rest sort of double figures there. Now, what have we got here? We've got a bit of speed on from from the five. What have we got? Five, I, six, ten. I thought the Sydney horse North Star Lass would lead maybe Waltz on by. I think she's lickety split and Boogie Dancer get really really great maps here. Um, they can be off fence if they want to be off fence, but they can be easily forward of midfield. Probably uh, handy Madam, enough there. Yeah. Madam Pomery, the Waller horse from mid inside draw, Shane, grand final day. I expected to sort of be forward of midfield, midfield. I thought Russian, Russian conquest was a real interesting horse here. It was drawn outside and not suited sand down. It's now drawn barrier one. So I expect it sits a lot closer and um, gets us like a much more suited passage. Uh, the rest of them sort of make up the the back half of the field in whatever order they sort of want to settle. I always get a shiver when I see Russian Conquest lining up after that Magic Millions Day. I had I was on Magic Millions Day. I uh, so. uh, very much cheering for her. <laughs> oh, that was one of the greatest calls of all time. The the amount of pressure you were under and how hectic that week was and like you had obviously spent time prepping those lines like Did not you're a freak. A, didn't prep. Oh at all. Bullshit. It bullshit. I had I had a, I had one of Australia's revered race callers sitting next to me and I made him look second rate. <laughs> Straight off the cuff. <laughs> and I got the photo right too. <laughs> Sorry, Gab. Over to you. Sorry. All right. It's no problem at all. I don't mind. I think she runs. She, I think. I think we see a good side of her today, and I think she's a she's a gun, a gun uh, filly. So yeah, I don't know. Do we want to start at one and work our way down, or? I think so. Yeah, yeah. sure. I, I think she's a really interesting horse here, and a horse I'm going to try and keep safe. She SP'd favourite in the Jim Maloney Stakes, which is only a listed race, but it's a decent race from Sandown, and it's a race a lot of these come through. As I said, it wasn't suited there. Now it's drawn barrel one. I think Jamie could almost be coffined here. And if that's a place to be come race eight, then I think it's a big chance of, of going close enough and I want to keep it pretty safe. Shane? 
Yeah, a little bit of a uh, little bit of a nibble at the opening double figure quote uh, back into eight dollars, and like that was just the wrong price double figure. She's a single figure chance here for sure. I think you touched on the, the map. Uh, she's drawn out or unsuited uh, two runs by uh, this preparation. Has settled closer last preparation from better gates, um, and certainly looks to map that way here. Um, yeah, definitely, definite winning chance. I think the key for her is the good track, and that's why we've seen her, her come in. You know, with it's all this a, it's rain a big around, race for that James, isn't it? Like, there's a there's a there's a stack of them here that either want it real wet. Yeah, and there's, you almost need to have two little bullets to fire here. <laughs> Which is why, yeah, which is why at the price, I think that Russian Conquest is a great each way play. And I think that's why, you know, she did open a little bit uh, wider, um, but now has come in. And like you said, I think she gets it better suited now drawing in. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be on each way with her. I think it's important to say the rail stays in the true and Jane Bunn's latest prediction is rain comes Wednesday night. Yeah. So we might see a little bit of irrigation, but Saturday's track favoured, slightly favoured on pace horses, but it was pretty fair and certainly was not the A ground to be rails in run. So I wouldn't anticipate rails in run is the grouse, but it might level out a little bit. We'll know by then anyway, but we can head on to number two now, which is the other Snowden runner in Rev Revolutionary Miss. Now, she ran two, two and a half lengths behind Waltz on by last start. Not a bad run. She's opened up at twenty dollars here. What are we thinking about her? I'm going to try and take her on. I don't think she can win. I think she's going awful. And the only positive I could sort of see is that Mark Zara jumps on, but I think she's limited. I think she's going to get exposed map wise, and uh, I'm going to try and lay her. Drawn poorly. Um, yeah, and I don't think can turn the tables around from that sand down run. Yeah, the pick of the. Um... The pick of the stone runners is definitely Russian Conquest. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, uh, yeah, I think for all the same reasons as the other two boys, not not for me. Yeah, and I think this is this is probably just that that little bit of extra quality um, here, which I agree with as well. And the three smart galloper, she's lickety split. Damien Lane to ride. Oh, nice horse. I uh, want to keep her on our team. I think that she's going to map the best. I think she has the most upside. I think the win at Flemington was like that of a proper horse. She was well back. The market liked her. The market said she's a proper horse. Uh, there's no reason to doubt the setup here. I, I think if the, this is like what we were saying before, James, if the rain came, I think it's advantage boogie dancer. Yeah, but on a on a soft six or better, I, I think she's a big bet if you're betting at home, and she's going to be a horse. So I'm going to try and keep green for us. I, I, I'm really, I think she's the number one seed here. And like that price, so if if if, if it stayed the, the, how the track is at the moment, you're obviously saying that you know she's a better price than Boogie Dancer, or you'd have, be more than happy I, to take that price over Boogie Dancer. Oh, one hundred percent. I I, th yeah. I think that. Um, it, you can't knock Boogie Dancer at the same time. Like it's never seen yeah. a good track, but mm -hmm. like that last win was like on a. They say it's a heavy eight. It was probably like a heavy twelve. It was when that was torrential rain that meeting at Caulfield. Yeah. Um, prior to that, she was she started seven fifty and was beaten by Troach. You know, so I, I just think this this Kiwi filly is sort of the the hot horse on the scene. Got the platform off a nice Flemington win. I, lo I really like her. Shane? Yes. Um, she had the blinkers on first time um, last start uh, at this trip, obviously, and um, certainly worked a treat. They, they did go at even tempo, which suited her, but she was still very strong through the line. Um, so she's, you know, she ticks that, she ticks that box. You know, she's, I can't see how she regresses from that run. Um you know, particularly sort of like third start here. Um, there's no nothing to say that she regresses and she runs up to that. She's you know, certainly going to be hard to beat. Um, D Lane, uh, D Lane uh, sticks obviously and, and, and gets a good map. So, you know, it, as you said, if the track stays dry, I would expect it to start um, a shorter price than Boogie Dancer. Yeah. 
Yeah, same here. I think she starts favourite for sure with this weather around D Lane. Um, perfect gate. Third start here in Australia with improvement to come. So I think it says it all. Very good. Yeah, no, she um has noticed she's she started uh she did start favorite in front of Boogie Dancer last start, I believe. Yeah, that's actually that's actually a shoot as she also learns three kilos less from that start. Mm. Yeah, no. But we can move on to Boogie Dancer and I I think I think this is a really nice filly as well and and this is gonna gonna be a good race between them. Um, I think obviously a forgive two starts ago when she was absolutely run off her feet there at Mooney Valley. Um, the extra two hundred she's going to like. She's probably she's already shortening up here, isn't she? A little bit. Mm. So I'm just not sure. You know how oh. how is she going to go, and is Lickety Split going to stay at that? You know where you want to be at that sort of four 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 twenty mark. Uh, she's. Two from two this track. She's airborne. She is going to be 25 days between runs, which is a chink. Um, it's a great point. Gab says, like, she's looking at split started shorter than her, not massively, but shorter than her and had three kilos more than her last time they met. I I think I'm going to take her on. I'm, I'm a bit nervous about it, and I'll be uh, quivering. If it starts to rain prior to it, and we've already laid her for a fair bit. But of the two horses in the market, she's certainly the one I want to take on at the prices. Shane? Yeah, totally agree. Um, you agree with me? Yeah, it's the drifter if the track stays dry. Um, there's got to be some queries um, around that sort of firmer surface. I mean, obviously, Mooney Valley was a soft track as well. Caulfield was a soft five, so it wasn't too bad at... Um, yeah, that was off a sort of walking tempo when it was on speed, when it beat um, Berkeley or Barkley Square. Um, yeah, how do they what? say it? I always thought it was Did Berkeley, it? but they call it Barkley. It's Berkeley. It's spelt Berkeley yeah. and they, they yeah. call it Barkley. Yeah. It's um, really... I, I think it's a punter's right to call a horse whatever you want. I'm going with is it that, wait, that, Is it the punter's right or is it the owner's right? You, you've got right. the bloodstock. You've got the bloodstock right. business now. You name the horse. But, as, right. but as an owner, if I'm going to name a horse something like that, that he has a silent letter or a something like you, you've got to expect that it's going to be wrong. Like yeah, you've got exactly. to be simple. Just have a simple name, and if you're going to spell it Berkeley and it's Berkeley, you know what I mean. It's, yeah, it's going good. To, yeah. good, yeah. strong. It's like yeah. that. Um, I like it. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, anyway, but uh, Boogie dances the uh, the the drift up, and uh, because um, because she's lickety split starts favourite Boogie dancer will drift. They'll swap positions in the market. I'll be against it. And on the same, like yeah, great filly can win, but there's just more fat in the market with her at three dollars fifty at the moment. I just don't think mm. she should be anywhere near that price. So I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say she can't win. Um, because she definitely can, but at the moment, because she's three fifty, there's a couple of other things that are at a better price that I'm happy to back instead of what, her. At what price is she a bet? Five bucks. Yeah, five bucks probably. If, if, I, if I, it I rains on the day, five bucks though. So. But if it rains on the day, she'll start like two fifty. Yeah, if it rains. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully not. To be honest. Yeah, hopefully not. Sounds like we're all going to be on she's lickety split. I hope that's a good three. <laughs> the quad is on. Um, we'll head to number five, North Star Lass, coming down from Sydney. Last few runs at Randwick haven't been too bad. We've got a couple behind Zoo Gotcha, who's obviously very intelligent, uh, Galapar. 550 here. Probably fair. Well, oh. she she beat Zoo Gotcha first up, who is like grouse proper form, and now group one form in Sydney. Um very hard to knock, but I want to because it's Sydney horse. Uh, <laughs> but it's the the chink I've found, and I, I don't know if we're going to take it on. I'll probably wait and see how the track plays. But it'll be lead fence, and it's two wins that come on heavy tracks. It's run third from two starts and missed the other start on a soft track and never seen a good track. Yeah. Now, it's by Zoo Star, so I don't think it means a lot. But maybe on a good track, it's a risk. Maybe 
on race eight, rail true eighteenth race in that position. The it's a slightly inferior ground. Don't know, but brings the grass Sydney form very very scary and uh, and we think Gay, it'll, Gay and Adrian, he, so. he said it would take up the lead. You think? Yeah, well, comfortably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's led it's led Group One good races. Like it's it's been this prep. It's had three races in Group one, Group Twos and then one in a Group One. And its worst settling position was second. There's really not a lot here that's going to take it on. I don't believe. I don't think so. Nah. Like, what, why? Have, I've got Walt on by up there, annoying it. Like Walt on by didn't lead at Sandown that day. It won for us the first time. Then the next time, it won for James. Okay. Yeah. Look, it it's like leads and um, it brings, regardless of the track condition, it brings the premium Group One form yeah. into the race. Um, yeah. So you can't be against it. I'll just let the market decide what price it starts. I won't be pricing this horse. Um, it's like it's hard to beat. I won't be risking it. Like it could just go to another level on a dry track. How do you know? Um, yeah, that's true. It's never like it's never seen a dry track. Um, so yeah, um, won't be taking it on. Yeah, I think like Tim Clark, Gay Waterhouse. If the track's playing leaderish, like that's scary. So. Um, yeah, yeah de- definitely can win, but like like you, Shane, I don't know what the price does. Soft, wet, leaderish, you know, swoopers. By that time, I think yeah. there. I think either way, that price will move sort of um, yeah north or south depending on if she gets those conditions to suit. I do think her in that position from Barrow Two assists Russian Conquest from Barrow One. Like if J Card jumps and gets a lot handier, she's behind a a horse that's like performed at the group level, Group One level. Well, she's going to like not get flushed out the back, old flame style here. Mm. Well, anyway, I, I I think I'm actually excited to see some of these that haven't been on a good track before. Like mm. some of them <clears throat> could go to a new level, and others might might be crying out for the rain again because that's what they used to. But um, we're on the sit number six, which is waltz on by barrier three. Another one that will go forward, um, eighteen dollars at the moment. Uh, at the moment, um, last two wins certainly haven't been too bad. Close one last start um, in front of Jenny Jerome. Jenny Jerome races here. Jenny Jerome's uh, the Tortoni filly that savaged the line out of nowhere. Um, this is like as blue as blood gets. Is that right, James? I asked you that today. Is it blue yes. blood? Yeah, this blue is blood. a blue blood. Like her mum won this race. Ooh. And her dad's on invincible. So like she went to a private school. She's minted. Yeah. She's and her mum's mum won this race also. Oh, we've got a family of pets. <laughs> well, there's a there's a fair bit of pressure on her then here. <laughs> but there is. Like, the the stable and the owners have looked after her. They've they've Hooked Luke Nolan and put Craig Williams on, so she's found two or three lengths already. Uh, she draws soft. Um, it sets up pretty nicely for Craig not to have to overthink this. Um, I, I think she's going to almost become a bet that if she gets to like a stupid price here, but never seen a heavy track, but is one from one on a soft. So mm. great hairs. But. James is on at the big price in a futures bet, so she's got no chance. So they should take back those lengths. Yeah, Just, yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she can't win. Uh, she would be double the price she is if she had a drawn. If you swap gates with Jenny Jerome, she's thirty-one dollars. She can't. PJ Moody and Craig Williams twenty-one times they've combined for one winner. They this thing cannot win. It uh, it's like it doesn't profile as a horse that's going to find a peak at sixteen hundred. Um. Yeah. Bad luck, James. No, nah, that's okay. I've I've got my money from her last start with the win. God bless her. I don't think she can win either. Um. There's others in that Sandown race that um will be beating her on Wednesday. Speaking of can't win, number seven, Man and Pomeroy, CJ Waller, James McDonald. What price would this be if it wasn't that combination? And does anyone <laughs> think this can win? Nah. Not for me. Well, I mean, nine dollars fifty. Like, come on. Will be biggest uh, price this horse just for fun. I don't, I don't like it at all. This, um, this horse has uh, got a will beat home whilst I'm by. I know the market probably suggests that anyway, but um, <laughs> tough the price, mate. Tough this is, price. Um, Come on, 
Oh, well, we'll be home. What else is around the same no, time? He's going to shoot stuff off. Russian no, no, conquest. Look, like it's like this is like a like a like a proper filthy stable setup. It had one go on the dry last preparation uh, when it ran second to Osipenko, who should have won the Caulfield Guineas. A um, couple of poke around runs on wet tracks in Sydney. Um, got within what of of Zugotcha a quarter half length, just just a bit below a half length. Um, got to a mile on a heavy track and failed. You take that last start failure away. And you can understand why this thing starts single figures. And it has the best jockey Stop. we'll ever see in our lifetime on it. Trained by the trainer, the best trainer that we'll ever see in our lifetime. And it has to start single figures and it has to be a chance with the with the map. I agree with your first statement, but I think the second statement, we might see him saddle up the winner of race number four there on on, on Wednesday. <laughs> All right. <laughs> We'll uh, have a look at Moco. Freeman, Can't win. Melon. Can't win. Jenny FYI, James, tell the truth here. He's not another future sticker. He's the king of the futures. But seriously. Uh, I got a huge price. I'm, I'm on an even bigger price, but absolutely at $35, $41, you can be on Moco. Um, Still hasn't won a race. Plenty of horses uh, in, in racing against your own grade win win big group ones like this after being maidens. Um, that that doesn't bother me at all. <clears throat> Happily be on each way, punters. There we go. They've all got to have a fan, don't they? Okay, now on to number nine, Jenny Jerome. Obviously, smart filly as well. Nice second behind Waltz on by last start at Sandown. Thirty one dollars here. What are we thinking? Um, very hard to figure this filly out. Like, kind of the reverse of uh, whichever horse Shane was talking about, Waller horse. Like, if it didn't do what it did last start, it should be like a thousand to one here. And then it's like Savage Line in the fastest last two hundred meters of the race, which is a race a lot of them come through. Uh, I think Barry Barry and nine and and coffee is enough for me to like, risk the horse, but um. Scared of the horse at the same time. Like his horses just generally improve as they go. And they'll ride on all surfaces by the looks. Yeah. Where yeah. scary horse. Shane? Um yeah, I just I can't imagine why we weren't on it last start. Um with Bolts on by. This is uh this is a like a really interesting setup, isn't it? Ran second to Boogie Dancer at Donald. Um it didn't run. It just didn't just run second though. Like it started two seventy. Yeah, like it's like it, there's something there, right? Um, the horse that's obviously going on to win better races. Um, then it comes down and wins it. Donald gets the job done. Um, don't know what happened at sale now. I know that you guys just don't like sale as a track. Market said it had none. It doubled in price. Um, you know, missed the start and got vetted and basically nothing. Crossover goes on at Sandown Hillside and it was the run of the meeting. Um, it's going to get back anyway. Like, is there going to be enough tempo for it? Is the track going to suit it? If the track suits, you know, like um, back with cover, like could this thing find the back of Boogie Dancer by like, act like any danger mm. at all it could? Like if it, if it got the right track into the race on a run on race, We'll know as the day unfolds. But if you're looking for a horse down the middle running on late, this could be the horse. Well, I think I'll... it'll get the back of Taj Knee that comes through the same lickety split race and gets Ollie mm. back. So he won't have to overthink tactically, just sort of tag Ollie. This is really shaping as one of those like bet before the jump type races, doesn't it? There's yeah. so many different scenarios with weather and pattern and all that. Uh, mm. But this one would be my wide cover peel run on if that's the way you wanted to be. Yeah, if that's where you wanted to be on the day, this is the horse you'd be on at the price. Nice. Yeah, I agree. And I've ta- and and that's I like Moko out of the she's lickety split race. We just never got a crack at him. So I think she can definitely improve and show us more than that. And then out of that sand down race, obviously 
Jenny Jerome. Like, I just don't understand how she's $31 and Waltz on buys $18. Like, I you're, can't. But you're, you're also building a bit of a portfolio in the Thousand Guineas, like, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, but let's take that lots. aside. If I had seven had tickets a, about 40 times if their, their current had a bet, If I hadn't had a bet and you're just purely looking at the race, I don't understand why Jenny Jerome is, uh, is a, such a, a – 31 instead of $18 uh, um, compared to what's on by. So, I think yeah, I'm like Shane, on. I guess if they're running on, um, yeah, like Moco and Jenny Jerome drawn wide. So, you know, they are going to get back and have to go back. If they're running on, um, yeah, they're two at a price I'll happily be on all day. I, I think she's a lot like Osipenko was. They, they're they happy to risk it and no one wanted to touch it early on. And then when they started to see a little glimpse of horses making ground, it was the one they came for. It was cleaned up. Yeah. Top of my head, twenty sixes into like sixteens or something like that. Like that, they'll find these sort of horses if the track's let, allowing them. Yeah, I quite like that. You know, she's put in that average effort at sale, and they have put a crossover nose band on because they can work wonders those things. And obviously, it helped her, you know, breathe a bit better there at Sandown. So she could progress really well in this. And as you said, if they're running on, I'd probably be happy to have something each way. Mm. Oh. Mm. Giving everything a chance. I've given everything a chance, I think, so far. <laughs> Let's see, number 10. What do you think of number 10, Shane? Taj me. Um, um, third behind Lickety Split. And she could go forward as well in this, I believe. Um, it's another one for the Snowdens, their third runner. D. Oliver rides this. Replaces yeah, um, Jay Parr. Um, uh, uh, I need to see an improvement. <laughs> like you're having a stroke. <laughs> I, I'll be, I don't. I don't. I feel bad saying this. <laughs> Honestly, well, I'm going to have to see a sharp improvement in D. Oliver's riding. <laughs> <laughs> the goat has just like we, we haven't been on the right end of the goat of late, and you know you start to get a little bit of um, recency bias. Um, so this could be like a really tricky gate for the goat. Um, if there's any indecisiveness, where where do you end up from the gate? Um, everything drawn inside him has got a pretty obvious position in run. So is the gate going to go forward and, and sit OSL or is he going to try and find cover? Um, there's a tricky map with too many unknowns for me. and I, I, Like, I, I'm, good figure last time, good effort. Um, you know, was strong at the trip. But this, the, um, just the map concerns me a little, so I'm going to have to. It's going to have to be one that I don't want to be on. He did. Um, the, the great man copped nearly as much flack on Twitter as Jack did oh, over the weekend yeah. of a couple of his rides, didn't he? And the collective IQ of the people doing that, was yeah. probably lower than the collective IQ yeah. of the people back me, which is which is a big call. I realize. The only that. thing that like, I what, seen what him... was he supposed to do on Zapateo? So yeah, that, that's... off the tongue, just said it like that, Gab. Zapateo. Yeah. Um, is that wrong? No. Zapatea. Zapatea. It, it, it was a perfect ride. The that horse improved and, and it went no good. Like, yeah, no, like, he gave it, he gave it, it the right it's like, it's like these blokes blaming the vet for their horse not winning. They're blaming Ollie. <laughs> like, it, nah. The bottom line is it wasn't the punter's fault. You know, it's got to be someone else's. Anyway, like, regardless of that, the, the greatest of all time. But they're, they're the all, best, they're yeah. all. They've good. all blown up because it's last race of the day. They've all overbet it and what and vent on Twitter that he's not the greatest rider ever and, anymore and blame him for getting a dollar eighty five thing. But I actually, I actually didn't realise he rode Zapatio because I was, I thought the most memorable thing he'd done all day was hit was hit Pilate <laughs> over the head with a whip. Fight. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, that, I'm being facetious. Just a tricky map for the great man, and um, it's I'm happy to work around this one. Yeah. Wanted me a bit of you, Paul Laley, Shane. Yeah, big strong to enjoy beast that gets the job done. That's, Seems that's to enjoy Paul Laley. crack. I was on Paul Laley. I made it my best of the day on the show, Jack. You might remember. <laughs> that's all right. right. It's going for the hat trick tonight, Bunners. Tonight is the hat trick ball from Shane Curlier. Number eleven. <laughs> Number eleven. She's pretty rich. Oh, uh, seriously, this fuck. is pretty rich. Putting this one in this race. We we're going through each runner and, and please do it appropriately. Um, 
She's four, four point one links behind Waltz on by last start. One hundred and twenty six dollars. They've got to be. They've got to be in there to make it fun for us. Go ahead. Can't win. They're there for the sandwiches, surely. Just a, a group one day out for the owners. Full credit to them. Great day, but um. No. Good luck. One from one oh. on the heavy. Yeah, well, it'd be hard to that say. That was at Bendigo. That was a maiden at Bendigo, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Bendigo maiden winner on the heavy. Uh, no, beat enough on, been... which we were on for the service. Oh, I think. Oh. <laughs> every every horse has come out of that race except for Zoo Fire and and gone backwards. Yeah, yeah. And nothing's won. One hundred twenty six dollars for a reason, but um, yeah, they make the market broad. Um, Safe passage to Higo. No way. So that's the thousand guineas runner by runner. Very good job. Um, now we'll just have a look at our best and each way for the day. Um, Shane, do you want to start? Why not, Gab? Uh, since I my best bet won last time we spoke, it's only fair that I go first, I suppose. That I win, uh, I win. Or... I was oh, off Pololi was my best. That's true. Good job. Well done. Um, Beautiful. Well done, Shane. Right, let's let's start. Let's. Oh, so this is my best. So my it's, this is my best betting race. All right. So I'm just taking advantage here of um of my legend status. Amongst us, his tipsters. Um, I'm back. He's allowed two. to have two. He changes the rules. He can have two bets. Uh, bets. I'm backing. Yeah, I'm backing two. I'm backing two horses in race seven, and they're both going to be good winning results for me. Uh, bigger bet on the five economics from the uh, Annabelle Nisham yard. Two dollars and eighty seen... cents. Sorry. Two dollars and eighty cents. Um, Chad Schofield. Chad Schofield. Like I know it raced on, a, on an average speed the other Still. day, but it's it's closing sectionals, and the way it did it was very impressive. Uh, made Opal Ridge look second rate. Who did win uh, the oh, top on, ta- ta- it's on a heavy eighteen? Doesn't matter. It's still it won. It had to win. Um, so not about what it beat, but how it did it. And I thought it was very impressive. Um, we've seen a number of. Annabelle Nisham horses progress, um, you know, up in grade through the spring and, and do the job early this spring so far. This like this looks like like a really progressive type. I thought it was impressive the way it did it. Um, I think it's very hard to beat, uh, but I will be getting a winning, taking a winning position on number nine, Great Barrier Reef for um, James and Chris. Know them both very well. First name basis. First name basis. Yeah. Sorry, I was just fixing it there. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, three. What's Chris's three nickname? What are they calling? What are you calling if you're his mate? Um, Wall? Wally. Chrissy. <laughs> no, he, no, we call him Christopher within our little circle of mates. Christopher. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Oh. Some call him CJ. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, this is a this is a. a it has always shown a bit, I thought, this horse. Um, obviously, Warwick Farm winner at the big SP uh, because J-Mac was off. I uh, thought it was run behind Giga Kick. was a nice, sneaky effort. And um, there's no Giga Kicks here. Uh, like These are like the genuine rung below the best. And um, I think this horse fits amongst them comfortably. And uh, I'm getting $16 to see if I'm right. And that's a juicy price. That's my best. Uh, race seven, number five, economics for me, for all the reasons Shane mentioned. Don't don't, don't need to play around. Keep it simple. Back economics. Gab? My, my best is going to be race four, number two, which is Keats. First of all, congratulations, boys. Having a runner there. Very exciting. Very much cheering for the team here. He's, uh, you know, been put on a, on, a, on a great sort of platform here at 2,000 metres and... Um, you know, they ran fast time and he can make his own luck again if he yeah. runs what he did near last start. So, um, yeah, very much cheering for you guys there. and uh, Very exciting for all those owners and, and everything involved. It's, it's um, a great story. Just on the pronunciation, the owners like to have, <laughs> like to pronounce this horse's name, Kiat. Kiat. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, just in case um, Matty Hill's watching. 
<laughs> or it'd be keys or something that's a silent T in there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, keys. Um, That'd be, yeah. yeah I think keys is a, Oh, it's $5 is stupid price. He should be closer to $3. I agree, Gab. Uh, my best, Caulfield, race three, number one, Yonkers. This is, this is I thought, Shane, the the real big Uncle Chris Wallace setup of the day. This is Zaki. Uh, had former another good horse. Cascadian. Cascadian. The you know. The, it's got the, Jack, it's got the Game good in winner form. Yeah, it's got everything you want in a horse, in one of Chris's horse. It's drawn inside, another box tick. Um, I think it's the best horse in the race. I think it's prime to peak and back up into a Caulfield Cup, and I'm glad we dodged it. Indeed. What's your value bet of the of the day, Shane? <laughs> go on out, you could go keep on. it a bit. Go on a little bit out wide here. I'm not going to say tomorrow. I know that I've killed a reputation <laughs> of declaring moral with big odds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, uh, I'm looking for a big improvement here on its last start run. Um, I, I like this platform here. Race nine at number nine, dynasties or dynasties depending on which school you went to. Um, Blake, Blake had it chasing uh, chasing the fence at Rose Hill last start behind Nimely, who's a proper group performer. This is a group three, and it's full of group three horses. Um, and just sort of had him, had her chasing chasing her spot the whole way, and she kept coming, kept coming, particularly liked her last bit of work, her last 50 metres I thought was her best. It wasn't a, it wasn't an obvious or a flashing light run or anything like that, but I thought her last you know 50 was good. I think stepping up to the 1600 here is a great platform. Um, another horse that's had a, you know seen a lot of wet tracks. The good track it did see was a Firm Eagle Farm surface, but that was a 2200 meter race in the Queensland Oaks behind Gypsy Queensland Goddess. Queensland form, yeah. Um, Blake is riding like the hungry man, like a hungry man, and he's riding elite. Uh, this is just one that's just completely been missed by the market here. Double figure odds, it's a bet each way for me. The value better today. Uh, I don't need to go into it anymore. Moco in the thousand guineas, uh, very brave you. catalyst. A couple of weeks ago, now you tipping maidens in group ones. You are it's big boy shit from you. Yeah. He and remembers the time that so you think did so you think when a cox played as a maiden or Seamus, something? Seamus yeah. Award. Seamus and Award. Seamus Award. Award. Sorry. Keep nah. thinking on that dream. My, mine, I'm going to be going to go to race nine, number one, which is Daisy's. Oh, yeah. I think she's flying this prep. Absolutely flying. Her first out run, absolutely loved and was on her there at Mooney Valley. Um, that first run was behind Kiss on All Four Cheeks and Lady of Honor. So you know, they've progressed. I think um, I'm not worried about the barrier. I think she goes back um, and hangs out with dynasties and hopefully they're, they're coming from, from a bit behind in this race. I'm hoping she's not on the fence. I'm, I hope she's a pair off um, or, you know, wide with a bit of cover there. Gee, she's got a good sprint on her. And, um, yeah, she's just an exciting galloper. I'm really happy with the $12. Uh, mine, race seven, number seven, eponymous. Another C Waller horse this time, Brett Preble. I think it should have won last start at, at uh, Mooney Valley at a good price. Uh, I think he can sort of sit off a good speed here, Brett. He, you want to talk about hungry? Uh, this is bank making time for Brett. Brett needs to make bank, and Brett needs to perform for Uncle Chris if he wants to make that bank. And I think this is an opportunity that he has um, to amend for what he probably sort of got a little bit wrong there at the Valley. Um, I, I think the horse is airborne and I, I want to be with it at the big cross. Well, sh surely we found a winner in there somewhere. Um, a great show. And I'm so, I really enjoyed that. Great show. Surely there's a winner there. We won't be... Hoeing into the thousand guineas. I'm having a big bet at the Yonkers. Keats double. Big. <laughs> big. <laughs> Responsibly, of course, Jack. Yeah. Gamble, download the app, download the baggy bet app also, and gamble responsibly. Always gamble responsibly, but have a responsible sized wager on Keats into Yonkers, in my opinion. That's what I'll be doing. Sounds and I like think we're going to lay Boogie Dancer. What do you reckon? Got to lay something. Lay Boogie Dancer. Boogie's going in. Sweet. All right. Well, Someone's bouncing in there. I just don't know who yet. 
<laughs> and what about Thursday's show, Jack? What are we doing? Uh, we are going to be live. The plan is to be live from 7 p.m. Um, we will be biggest price a number of horses if you're there live. Um, the prices will be up. That'll be for everyone to minimum bet laws uh, for each and every person who's watching the show or getting text what we've gone up big on the show. Um, so that'll be 7 p.m. on Friday. If you want to Thursday catch night. it, make sure. Yeah, Thursday 7 p.m. on Thursday night. Sorry. Make Not sure you time. like and subscribe to the YouTube channel so you get notified when we do go live so you don't miss it. But I, I'll, I'll give you my word. We're going to be the biggest price of, of a horse in every race. Probably two horses that we preview and probably a couple in Sydney too. And it is only going to be until sort of that 8, 8.30 and then that price will be switched off. So it is important to like and subscribe and tune in to Thursday's show live uh, if you want to take Jack on. An hour an hour of power, an hour-ish of power. But make yeah. sure you've downloaded the app. Gamble responsibly, but you've got to download the app if you want to get, take those prices. Have a great also, week, guys. Fantastic. Also week. worth noting that um, on a Wednesday this week, we're doing a Facebook Live of the Launcheston meeting. So that's Launcheston, <laughs> but we call it Launcheston because we've got Jack Higgins launch. doing our preview, who did a preview for Launcheston uh, and tipped a $31 winner in race two for anyone that, that read the analysis. So rather than uh, than sitting there reading it, we're going to have um, we're going to have Jack and a couple of other guests uh, on the show and we're going to preview uh, the races just before the first at uh, Launceston and then they'll, we'll bet live for the first uh, three or four races and then preview the quality legs and send you off the way. So two little, a two-hour little uh, live show on Wednesday evening from 6 o'clock Victorian time. We'll catch the back end of the Ipswich card. We'll have some Manor Yard mail from Ascot, from Pistol, fresh off a 20-unit win on Saturday uh, and the Launceston mail uh, race by race. So plenty of uh, live action on the Mailbag channel. Beautiful. Uh, Gabby, you'll be hosting too, so I'll see you there. <laughs> <laughs> Righto. Oh, Guys, that's, that's been the uh, Thousand Guineas preview show brought to you by uh, punningform.com.au, the database that we all use and we all win with, and baggybet.com. Download the app, gamble responsibly. Enjoy uh, a fat Metro meeting at Caulfield on a Wednesday. Bye for now. <laughs>